Mr. Match area. And there they are, two of our four remaining players. On your left, Eric Skinstad on green, white, Megamorph. Matthew Moore on your right from Italy on Hangerback Abzan. Frank Carsten, you've seen these players throughout the tournament racking up these wins. Who's your favorite for this match? Well, I think it's going to be a close one. Uh, the many of the cards that the players have in their decks are similar, such as uh, Fleece Main Lion and Dromoka's Command. The main differences are that Skinstead has the entire Deadmiss Raptor engine to uh, well provide some value in long and grindy games, whereas um, Matteo Moore has Hangerback Walker and well all the black cards, Siege Rhino, Absent Charm, and so on. I think my favorite would be the Hangerback Absent deck, but only slightly. All the black uh, removal cards that the deck has access to be good in this matchup but if the mega morph deck would have a fast uh, dead mist raptor then in a long and grindy game recursion of the dead mist raptors might prove to be pivotal as well yeah and off to a fast start eric skinstead is indeed a fleece main lion on turn two followed by a uh, elvish mist oh no third land for eric skinstead certainly not what he was hoping for matthew moore on the other side uh, does already have a hanger back walker on turn two uh, for his own, he, he also has a fleece main line, a hanging back walker, another copy. He's actually got two fleece main lines on a couple of lands, so a good hand, but not too much going on just yet. Well, at least he has the lands to eventually make fleece main lion monstrous. Yeah, I think we're in for a long and grindy game, especially if possibly both players get a monstrous fleece main lion, then attacking will become difficult for, for both players. And eventually cards like uh, Wingmate Rock for uh, Matteo More or Planeswalkers like Ajani or even Elspeth for Eric Skinstead might prove to be uh, pivotal. And so what happened here is Matthew Moore, he put a second counter on his Hangerback Walker to make it a 2-2 and then play Absent Charm, putting another counter on it and fighting it with the Fleece Main Lion. So he's got himself three topters right there and Eric Skinstead skin that still seems to be stuck on two lands. He does find a Corsair of Proofing. Does he find a land on top? He does. He puts that into play, gains one life, goes up to 21. On top is another land in the form of Mana Confluence, and he says go. Yeah, getting a free card there, always, uh, always good. This is a matchup where, as I mentioned, it can be long and grindy, because the players are playing so many similar cards. There are some removal spells left and right, so anytime you can get some card advantage, it will be useful. But at the moment, I think Matthew More is still ahead on board with all of these Topter tokens and then likely some additional creatures coming down as well. And there they go, the Topters coming, putting Eric at 18. A fetch as well for Matthew, so he's going down to 16. Despite having the early attack, he's still down some life thanks to that Fleece Main Lion. I love seeing these interactions with Hangerback Walker. The Drummoka's command on the previous turn, right, the extra plus one plus one counter, was transformed in an extra Topter token. If there is a uh, Hangerback Walker coming down this turn, hey, it can get uh, pumped by Absent Charm on the, on the next turn, transforming into even more counters. And Eric Skinstead does not have access to Anafenza or to Absent Charm because he's straight up green white which means that he does not have a favorable way of uh, destroying a hangerback walker or rather exiling a hangerback walker. And talking about hangerback walker, there we have copy number three for Matthew Moore. He has a plan. <laughs> and the plan is called Topters. Yep. Planning to uh, boost both of them on the next turn and then probably the turn after and eventually trying to win with an army of Topter tokens which is a good way to get around uh, these dead mist raptors right if he if all he had were some ground creatures like anafenza then well anafenza would actually exile the dead mist raptor but suppose uh, some other creatures like siege rhinos well then dead mist raptor plus recursion 
could be a good way to uh, deal with that. But these Topters, they are eventually going to the air. And Eric Skinstad does not play any flyers or have any ways of uh, dealing with uh, flyers apart from Dromoka's command. Yeah. Matthew Moore, of course, on the, th the very popular hangerback Abzan deck. Actually, two of his friends played a quite identical list. Uh, we saw one fall down uh, last round in the form of Marco Kamiluzzi. Uh, another friend, Andrea Mangoji, he went X and 4 with the deck. So the deck certainly put up some strong numbers and is, do uh, is off to a great start in this game as well. I wonder if Matthew is actually planning to, well, jump block the Dead Mist Raptor and perhaps even uh, course of Kufix with his uh, Hangerback Walker. Activate both and then cash him in to have seven 1-1 one -one topters in total. Would make for a three-turn clock in the air. One thing that Eric Skinstead can do in order to uh, raise those flying topters is via the lifelink on uh, Hidden Dragon Slayer. He has at least one copy in his hand. He also found himself a Dramoka's command to, to fight with the Hangerback Walkers in response to the plus one plus one and then that way Matthew only gets one token but he's still in a good position uh, and we should not of course forget the absent charm in Matthew's hand but first Eric is going to attack Corsair of Krufix and that Miss Raptor come in let's see what Matthew does he can actually put plus two plus two on one of his hangar backs that is blocking the dead Miss Raptor but mm. that runs into a lot of tricks yeah and to Dromoka's command in particular which Eric Skinstead actually has so I don't think I like that play one one option is to double block the Corsair of Kufix and then try to uh, double pump the Hangerback Walkers. Or maybe, yeah, just playing Absen Charm to exile the Dead Mist Raptor and buy some time. Yeah, so it looks like Matthew Moore is likely expect... Uh, Matteo Moore is uh, likely expecting uh, Dromoka's command here from uh, Skinstad. Otherwise, he might have been interested in double blocking the Corsair of Krufix, thereby trading one of his hangerback walkers for a Corsair. That seems like a fine trade. And now we have a more for Eric Skinstead. Of course, we know that is a hidden Dragon Slayer, very much hidden underneath that morph token we are gonna see right there. And Matteo, he puts his hangerback on a 2 2. Uh, should still untap that other hangerback walker, if I'm not mistaken and place a Temple of Malady, scrying the card to the bottom. I'm a little surprised that uh, Skinstead did not respond to that Hangerback Walker activation by, say, uh, fighting a creature of his with the Hangerback Walker that is being activated, possibly putting an additional plus one plus one counter on his uh, morph in the process, which can unmorph into a lifelink guy, so... Uh, getting a damage raise on that way. And in the meantime, Siege Rhino for Matteo. He goes up to 15, Eric down to 11 life. Uh, this means that the Hidden Dragon Slayer has found himself a target though. He's gonna tap 3 mana, so it seems like he's not... Oh, it's 3 mana, yeah. There we go, Hidden Dragon Slayer. And Morph does take 1 from the mana confluence, but gets, gets himself a 3-2 a lifelink and can actually fight with the 3-2 lifelink with his copy of Dromoka's command. Yeah, of course you gain some life by fighting as well. That could be valuable. But if let's see, if he attacks here with the hidden dragon slayer, what is going to happen? Then Mat Matteo could block the hidden dragon slayer with his uh, one one no with his two two hangerback walker, and then possibly pump it and cash it in. Then Skinstead can respond by fighting the Hidden Dragon Slayer with the Hangerback Walker, denying him one additional topter. Uh, that seems fine. So the attack is kind of safe, although... Let's see. The Hidden Dragon Slayer right now is a 3-2. So if Matteo suspects there is nothing in Skinstead's hand, he will... Uh, Probably block... Or you might even be interested in blocking the Hidden Dragon Slayer. Well, still, if he would expect nothing, then Matteo could block the Hidden Dragon Slayer with his 1-1 Hangerback Walker, pump it up, trade him, and then get two Topter Tokens. 
but if he expects a Dromoga's command, then the best way to block is in a way that forces Skinstead to act first, so that you can be the last one to uh, uh, get on the stack with a Hangerback Walker activation. Go ahead, Frank. You're you're explaining this beautifully to our viewers. Uh, indeed, it it is a tough decision. It always the any combat involving a possible Dromokas command is very very hard. It it is like there's so many possibilities. I, does he play it? Does he need to play it? Do I want him to play it? Do I want to act first, as you said? Do do, do you want me to act first? And it seems like he's just going for his 2-2 two -two Angerback Walker onto the dra the Dragon Slayer, which I think is a, is a good block. Yeah, this is exactly the block where Matteo is saying, okay, if you have Dramarca's command, then either you have to act first right now, or you will lose the Hidden Dragon Slayer, and thereby losing the lifelink ability that is keeping you in this damage race. And now, if Eric Skinstead plays the Dramarca's command, then Matteo can uh, respond by pumping his Hangerback Walker. It seems like he's not going to hit the button. He keeps his uh, Dromoka's command in his hand. He lets the Hidden Dragon Slayer die. And the M Mateo Mora got rid of the lifelink. And he's got himself two more tokens. That's five toppers now for Mateo. And Valor stands. Not very good. Another Hidden Dragon Slayer could be good though. And another morph, of course, another hidden ring of flare, as we know. And go from Eric Skinstad. Matteo untaps with now five tokens and another hangerback walker. This card has been so good this weekend. I cannot say it enough. I was surprised by Martin Yusa's statement after making it into the top eight. Hangerback walker? That's the most overrated card ever. A 1-1 one, one for two mana? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. I and mean, maybe it is a little overrated, but it did put up an excellent performance uh, this tournament here. It's also possible that um, Matteo knows about the Dromoka's command via Corsa of Kufix, in which case uh, playing around it makes even more sense. Now a land off the top from the Corsa of Kufix, he draws the Dead Misraptor but still hasn't that much going on and he's facing a two turn clock with all these flyers and Matteo actually added a fleece main lion which is a very good card against this uh, green white mega morph deck especially if you can go monstrous yeah of course if Matteo activates the fleece main lion to make it monstrous Eric can just respond by saying okay I'll put a counter on my course of Kufix and then they are going to fight but once again you want to be the last one on the stack always responding to the Dromoka's command, not the other way around. And Eric yes, somehow has to get some value out of this hidden Dragon Slayer. The lifelink ability is a way for him to uh, stay in the game against all of these topter tokens. So he preferably has to protect that hidden Dragon Slayer, although he has then protector in hand that he could use to return it uh, back from the graveyard. If Skinstad attacks here with the Hidden Dragon Slayer, however, then Matteo can just once again line up a block, hang a back walker on the Dragon Slayer, and they are going to uh, trade most likely. Eric also has Nissa in hand. Uh, it's a nice creature that can get close to Planeswalker form but not an immediate answer to all the topters coming his way shortly. Yeah, Eric Skinstead is just going to attack with his Morph and a uh, Corsair of Crufix. He... I'm not... I don't think he will do anything before uh, Eric Skinstead does something. He... I'm sure he's fine trading that Hangerback Walker, cashing it in for another two topters, killing the Morph. Uh, but it seems like Eric Skinstad is going to do something this time around. Maybe he could play that Valorous Stance, which is kind of useless anyway. At this point, it's actually a very good card against the Abzan, Abzan aggro deck. But uh, so far, no, no, no four power creatures yet. He does still have the, I think the that's Hidden fine. Dragon Slayer anyway. 
because Eric cannot really start with Dromoka's command, then Matteo will just monstrous the Fleece main line in response, which means that Matteo has the perfect blocker for Hidden Dragon Slayer. And starting with Hidden Dragon Slayer, well, just gaining some life. That's okay, I guess. But how is he now going to beat seven top tier tokens? Yeah, I don't really see it. And Eric also cannot realistically tap out here. Still needs to keep up the two mana for the Dromoka's command in order to respond to the Fleece Main Lion uh, monstrous activation. So I think yeah, playing the Valorous stance here might have been slightly better keeping that Hidden Dragon Slayer around. I don't think Eric has much that he can do against seven top tier tokens. Yes, uh, th the biggest cards in his deck are a Johnny and Elspeth, but they're not really going to help. Maybe Hangerback Walker of his own. He has two copies of, uh, of that card in his deck, so then he can play Hangerback Walker, fight it with Remoka's command, but even then, there's so many top tier tokens on Matteo's side of the board. I don't think there's much that uh, Eric can do here. And in the meantime, the Fleecemen line and the seven tokens they got in, they put Eric at six and killed the Elvish Mystic in, in, in the same process. Uh, he does find a land on top. He could gra crawl back up to seven, but it seems like this game is about to be over. The Dromoka's command can still fight now to kill a top tier to keep him alive for one more turn. But I don't think he's drawing life here in this first game of the semi-finals of Grand Prix London. Now he also knew what was coming up thanks to the Corsa of Krufix. Not that there was much in his deck, but... Uh, and there we have it, game one to Matteo More, another win for Hangeback Walker. Wow, it just, it keeps on, they keep on coming. They keep on coming. The top tier tokens, yeah. they are where it's at right now. And so the funny thing is with Hangerback Walker, you don't even want it to stick around. You want it to die and give you, you want to <laughs> cash it in for some top tiers. Yeah, w we, we've seen it die most of the time as a 2-2 two -two or 3-3, three -three, which is an excellent deal. But it doesn't have to grow into a humongous size. Yeah, but let's take a look at these guys' cyber, as they will do as well, of course. In the semifinals of a Grand Prix, you get to see your opponent's decklist, you get to see what he will be bringing in, and maybe do the same analysis we will be doing right now. So, Matteo's sideboard is two Elspeth Suns champion. Seems, seems good in a grindy matchup like this. Also, uh, an excellent answer to uh, Deathmist Raptors. Four copies of Tatsis. Don't love that card in a grindy matchup because it could be a poor late game top deck. One ultimate prize, well that seems okay even though it cannot kill uh, Fleece Main Lion or some of the Moors, but still an efficient removal spell overall. Three Tragic Arrogance, which I don't think is really meant for this matchup. Although the board can get flooded with creatures, um, it is still kind of a symmetric effect in a matchup where the decks are fairly similar. An Unravel the Eater, not for this matchup. Three Herald of Torment, which might actually be quite quite good in order to fly over. Poor against Dromoka's command, sure. But a nice way to break any board stalls, especially against that Mist Raptor. So I wouldn't be surprised if that one comes in as well. And then finally one more Dromoka's command. And on the side of Eric Kinstad, green-white Megamorph deck. Let's take a look. Two Hangerback Walker, one Brimas, two Evolutionary Leap, two Unravel the Eater, one Back to Nature, one Dromoka's Command, one Elspeth Sun's Champion, one Glare of Heresy, two Tragic Arrogance of his own, and two Plummet. What are the cards we're looking to bring in there? Well, nothing that really helps against all the Flyers, although going for the Hangerback Walker plus Evolutionary Leap uh, theme might not be terrible uh, in this matchup. It's a bit slow, but you know, Eric is going to be on the play this game, so he might have uh, enough time to, to get there. Um, yeah, like Brian Kibler was planning to bring in Hangerback Walker and Evolutionary Leap in his uh, sideboard plans with, well, this original Green White Megamorph deck. Now, the Hangerback Absent deck is a bit of a different animal, of course, but. I could still see going for that Evolutionary Leap plus Hangerback Walker team plan and then possibly board out um, well some of the small creatures like Warden of the First Tree, um, possibly Dromoka's uh, command, which is hard to turn into a two for one, although it was still important in the, in the previous game. 
As for what Matteo might be boarding out, well, it could be some of the the weak creatures as well, stuff like uh, yeah, Warden of the First Tree. It's it's fine actually in in the late game, but not all that efficient early on. Dramoka's command, nice removal spell, but again a bit uh, situational. Possibly those kinds of uh, cards. But they will certainly be interested in keeping in, well, the, the wingmate rocks, as well as the, the Elspeths, kind of the late game cards in order to take over. Yeah, and let's not forget, of course, we have another semi-finals uh, who's playing right now. Uh, in On the other side of the bracket, we actually have Fabrizio Onteri. He's playing against Bill Kronopoulos from Greece. Uh, these players are still in game one at this moment. Uh, Fabrizio Onteri also playing the hangerback Abzan. Uh, Bill Kronopoulos playing the Jeskai deck, which we saw actually beat Marco Kamaluzzi last, uh, last uh, round. Uh, who do you think is favorite there? Because we saw uh, Bill already beat one of the hangerback absence. Well, for that reason, uh, maybe I should go with uh, Bill. But uh, traditionally speaking, Siege Rhino was typically good against Mantis Rider, uh, especially in those kinds of damage races. And on top of that, well, it's Fabrizio Anteri in an English uh, GP. He always tends to do well at these events, sometimes even wins them. Fabrizio was third at Grand Prix London 2013. Well, two years later, he's here again. Maybe he will finish third again, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he takes it down uh, this time. And he actually lives two minute walk from this venue. He he came to the side on <laughs> Saturday still wearing his sleeping shorts. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> he didn't even matter, uh, matter to, to put them off. He just came right here out of bed. But anyway, we're off in the sec second game of this game. Eric off to a good start. Elvish Mystic on turn one off a of forest. He cr he cracks his uh, windswept heat. So does he have another follow up with that? A good start. It would be of course uh, Dead Mist Raptor right away. And we see a hand of Elsped, two Den Protectors, and. Unravel the Eater and another land, so quite a good, quite a good hand uh, yeah, for Eric. He did bring in Unravel the Eater as a potential answer to the Hangerback Walker. I don't love that strategy because it can be risky if uh, Matteo doesn't draw Hangerback Walker. You're stuck with a with a dead card in hand, which will happen in say roughly half of uh, half of the games. But admittedly, it is a very good answer to Hangerback Walker. And if you expect the game to go long, then, well, eventually Matteo will find a hangerback walker and then you have an excellent answer to it. In come the morph and the Elvish Mystic. Matteo goes to 17. Is Eric... He's not going to play his second copy of... Uh, of the Protector. Why, uh, why wouldn't he play his second copy? Th th there's no card like Drown in Sorrow or something for, for Matteo. No languish either. Yeah, that is a bit uh, surprising to me, I have to admit. Maybe he wants to keep up the Unravel the Eater, but well, if Matteo would have had Hangerback Walker, he would have played it uh, already. Maybe Eric is scared that if he taps out for the, for the morphed Den Protector, then Matteo can play removal spell on one, untap play removal spell on another, and then you lose all of him. But in but fact, there there is no two mana removal, s at least not for Swamp Forest, from Matteo. There is no ultimate prize doesn't work yep. against the morph. It's only as we see now the the hero's downfall that's going to work. But it doesn't yeah, do I, I agree. It seems like a bit of an unusual uh, play to be uh, making there. Maybe he wanted to make sure he could get back the women swept heat like he did now. Maybe that was his plan always. Always get the value. Yeah, and he attacked with the Elvish Mystic signaling that he doesn't want to play his Den Protector again. Well, uh, it admittedly, Elspeth is a very good card against these uh, Hangerback Abs and Decks. So getting up to six la uh, five lands and an Elvish Mystic is quite good. Now a fetch for Matteo. He's already down to 12 life. Uh, thanks to this morph and also one damage from the Lanower Waste. 
Uh, let's see if he finds himself a 4-drop or maybe another removal spell. Oh, the removal spell wouldn't be too good. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the downside of playing a 3-color deck. Your mana base will deal more damage to you. There's Sorin with a token. Yes. Mateo says go. Now with a 2-2 two -two vampire token and a planeswalker. Did he draw another Unravel the Eater? He did indeed draw another Unravel the Eater. So a bunch of situational removal spells uh, in his hand, but also a big Planeswalker. Unfortunately, the Vampire does have flying, so that one will attack for 3 and even for 5 with the Absent Charm in Mateo's hand. So he could get rid of the Elspeth right there, also gaining 5 life, mm -hmm. but losing his own Sorin in the in the swing back. True, he does have ultimate prize to destroy one of the tokens, but that is not going to be enough. But at least Mateo has an answer to the Elspeth. Elspeth is an excellent card in this matchup, uh, especially because it's so grindy with lots of trades. It uh, always gives you some advantage, leaving behind some, uh, some tokens at worst. And, well, if... At best, the opponent doesn't answer it. Elspeth can just win the game single-handedly. But I would expect Matteo to try to take out the, the Elspeth here. It seems like he is indeed going for that plan. Puts two counters on the Vampire. Attack your Elspeth. And away goes Elspeth. Five life for Matteo. So he's back up to 17. Also has, as you said, the the ultimate prize mana up. If Eric only attacks with three soldier tokens, the Sorin is actually going to survive. But, ah. Eric, but Eric still has a Den Protector to get back the Elspeth, right? Yep. So that could be huge here. Eric doesn't have a good way to deal with the 4-4 the four four Flyer, except, well, Elspeth, of course. He can get back the Elspeth, play it, and then minus in order to destroy the Vampire. Vampire gets in Eric down to 13 life. Does Matteo has have more pressure after that? Taps yeah. for mana and there is Siege Rhino. Oh, this is going to make the Elspeth minus even more impactful. Yeah, skin set can now sweep Matteo's board and end the turn with a bunch of 1-1 uh, tokens and an Elspeth in play. Whereas Matteo has nothing. Well, Skinstead looks to be uh, claiming this second game here. There we go. Minus three on the Elspeth. Kill your Rhino and your 4-4 Vampire. Uh, does lose his Den Protector to an ultimate prize for Matteo, but puts him back down to 17 and now very much in control of this game. Ooh, that's a good card. Tragic arrogance now for Matteo. That could actually manage to kill the Elspeth and sweep the board for Eric if if things go well. Uh, if if Eric just well actually with the with the trample from Siege Rhino, a very good card to draw there, the tragic arrogance. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected uh, Matteo to board it in because this is still well kind of a mirror match close to it. But yes, it is an excellent way to deal with uh, Elspeth. Because now Eric is going to take up the Elspeth, get even more tokens. And then Matteo will play Tragic Arrogance. Say, okay, of all the creatures you have, you can keep one soldier token. Yeah, you can also keep the Elspeth, but I'm now going to attack it with my Siege Rhino. And it seems like we have our first finalist. We haven't seen him play in the top 8. We did see him, but it is Fabrizio Anteri. 10 minute, wo two minute walk from his own <laughs> house right into the Grand Prix Finals here at Grand Prix London. Great performance by him. Of course, also a great performance by Bill Kronopoulos, who managed to sneak into the semi-finals. Very well done by him. He will be qualifying for Pro Tour and packing up some nice cash and pro points. Yeah, so the question here is going to be, are we going gonna to see a Hangerback Abzan mirror match in the finals? Or just Hangerback Abzan versus Green White Megamorph. Fabrizio didn't have the best uh, last year, 
failed to uh, reach gold level uh, status just by a couple of points but he is starting this season with an excellent uh, beginning so does Mateo already want to pull the trigger on the tragic arrogance what could go wrong if he does that well for instance uh, Valorous stance if Mateo would play tragic arrogance and then Eric skins that response with a Valorous stance on the siege rhino it has been all for naught but if Eric had Valorous stance he probably would have uh, cast it already on the siege rhino in order to be able to attack for a bunch so I wouldn't be too scared of that but okay. Matteo uh, goes for a morphed den protector planning to take it uh, take it easy but to be fair he doesn't have to uh, kill the Elspeth yet Sure, the Elspeth now gets another turn to make more soldier tokens, but those are just going to fall to all of the tragic arrogance. And Eric Kinsat still has five cards in hand. Of course, two of these are Unravel. One, the Dramoka's Command. One, seems to be Fleece Mainline and an Elvish Mystic. And now he's going for the Dramoka's Command on the Morph. Of course, that is going to trigger a Unmorph from Matteo. He's getting back a hero's downfall in order to kill that Elspeth or maybe a big creature. And then Protector goes away thanks to the Dromoka's command. So maybe Matteo is waiting with his tragic arrogance for an even better time. Planning to go for hero's downfall on Elspeth, but... I don't know, it seems appealing to uh, take out all of those soldier tokens. Especially if Eric adds another creature to the board. Yeah, and Tragic Arrogance is an excellent answer to the Fleece Main line. Maybe this is also what Matteo was waiting for, um, to get some additional value with Tragic Arrogance, and this is perfect, because Fleece Main line, sure, it's indestructible, but you have to sacrifice it to Tragic Arrogance still, so it is going to die here, and then only one soldier, maybe an elf, will remain. Nah, let's keep the soldier. And Elspeth is going to fall to a Siege Rhino attack. Huge swing here by the, by the Tragic Arrogance. I am impressed with how well it has been doing in this, uh, this matchup here. Didn't think all that much of it at first, but when it comes to answers against Fleece Main Lion and Elspeth, Tragic Arrogance does uh, one heck of a job. It does indeed. And back to Eric. Does he find the cards he needs? He's got another morph. That is probably a Den Protector. He's also got these two Unravels waiting to well find a target as you mentioned sometimes half of these games you will not find the target you need and Matteo still has that hero's downfall which he returned swing with the siege rhino Eric Skinsat already at 7 life it's not a lot of life Matteo could have actually returned his siege rhino last turn instead of the the well two turns ago instead of the hero's downfall and then he would have had lethal last turn around a triple block there from Eric Skinstad aggressive yeah now Matteo has a choice uh, to make possibly already well Matteo doesn't have to do anything yet <laughs> yeah Matteo can wait until the then Protector is uh, unmorphed, so now there is 5 power lining up. Matteo has the option of playing Hero's Downfall on one of Skinstead's creatures, such that his uh, Siege Rhino would survive, but then he doesn't have the Hero's Downfall for Elspeth anymore, and I think that is going to be a bigger threat, so keeping the Downfall for the Planeswalker seems, uh, seems warranted. And hey, the Siege Rhino trades for all of those guys, so that's all good. And now a Tragic... <laughs> Arrogance for Eric Skinstad. They, they keep on swinging. But the first one for Matteo Moore was certainly better. <laughs> yes. Tragic Arrogance doesn't do a whole lot when uh, the only card on the other side of the table is a single Anafenza. There goes the Anafenza. There goes the Elspeth. Hero's downfall gets rid of that. Does take two damage in the process from his lands. Goes down to 17. So lots of trades here. And it may eventually start to come down to a top deck race. Another copy of Anafenza. Perfect answer in the form of Hidden Dragon Slayer for Eric. Yep. 
Yeah, Eric certainly has more cards remaining in hand. If Matteo draws a Hangerback Walker, then Eric will be happy. Finally, a use for those Unravel the Eaters. How about a Siege Rhino? Unmorph my Hidden Dragon Slayer, kill your Anafenza. Matteo is giving it a little bit of a thought. Could he do something about this? Maybe Valor stands? He doesn't run any of that, if I'm not mistaken. If Matteo has Dramoka's command on hand, maybe he wants to fight off right now. To, r to exile the Hidden Dragon Slayer. Yeah, because if he... Yeah, if he has Siege Rhino and Dromoka's command and he doesn't use the Dromoka's command here and plans to use it later, then Eric Skinset might have the opportunity of responding with a Valorous stance, thereby well, countering the, the fight ability of Dromoka's command. But on the other hand, the Hidden Dragon Slayer is not a huge threat at this point. So maybe Matteo can, uh, can wait for a bit. There we have Siege Rhino, Eric down to 4. Matteo back up to 20, right where he started at. Yeah, and on top of that, if Eric had Valor stands in hand, say, two turns ago, he probably would have used that one to deal with Siege Rhino rather than the triple block, so I wouldn't be too scared about it. Eric Skinset looking at two Unravel, one Elvish Mystic, one Least Main Lion, and one Tragic Arrogance. He's playing both of his creatures. Says yeah. go. And by waiting with the Dromoka's command, Matteo now also gets the opportunity of using it to kill Flea's main lion, rather than the Hidden Dragon Slayer, for which he actually drew ultimate price. So that worked out for him. Yeah, this block, can Eric actually survive this? I don't think he can. If he blocks with everything, we see ultimate price on the mm -hmm. Hidden Dragon Slayer, we see a fight with the Flea's main lion, and then a counter on the Sea Rhino. That's five power... Keeping one toughness back, that's four trample. Yep, that should uh, do it if Matteo goes for it. If Matteo's go f Matteo goes for it, he's in the finals and we're looking at Hangerback against Hangerback in GP Hangerback. <laughs> yes. There we have it, Hidden Dragon Slayer. Blocks, ultimate prize, handshake, Matteo Moore. Up to the finals, 2-0 to Hangerback Abzan. He's going to be facing off Fabrizio Anteri. Siege Rhino. In the mirror match. Such a good card. Yep. Yeah, that is also what uh, Fabrizio told me when I asked him earlier, what's the key to this Hangerback Abzan mirror match that we are going to see in the finals shortly. It was, well, top deck Siege Rhino. <laughs> That's what he told me. I, I, well re I remember his match against uh, Daniel Fior in, game w in day one. He actually went, he got his opponent down to three, had one turn to top deck Siege Rhino, and well, he got there. Mm. Wow. Another important element uh, might be Abzan Charm. Use it in the right uh, modes. Exiling uh, Hangerback Walker, putting counters on creatures to make it win combat. Maybe draw cards in the late game when the board is uh, clear. So finding the, the little uses for all those uh, well modal cards. But... Well, we're going to see a mirror match with a bunch of Siege Rhinos. And let's take a look at what we had so far in this top 8. We started with 8 players. Piotr Wald against Matteo Moore. Uh, Matteo winning over Piotr there. Uh, thanks to a game loss to Piotr and his Abzan control deck. S second semi-finals. Martin Juzek going down to Eric Kinstad. It was Red Green Daggers losing to Green White Megamorph there. And then in the other side of the bracket. Fabrizio Antero, he beats his friend Daniel Fior. Well, he got a concession in game three. Uh, Fabrizio Antero, uh, his friend conceded to him. I uh, think because he, w he got his deck list from him. Uh, they're very good friends. They know Fabrizio had more use of the pro points and stuff like that. And then the fourth match was Marco Camiluzzi playing against Bill Kronopoulos. Uh, Marco Camiluzzi unfortunately mulliganing, da mulliganing down twice to five there against Bill. It was Bill advancing to the semifinals. And then two more matches were played. Mateo